Hey guys, Michael here. Today I'm going to share with you how I clean the P2 laser cutter. Stick around, let's get to it. For the essential items cleaning your P2, you're going to need to start off with your included screwdriver that came with your P2. This is the dual tip screwdriver with the Allen head on one side and the Phillips head on the other. And you're also going to need some Q-tips some lens wipes these are used to clean eyeglasses and so they won't scratch the glass also you're gonna need some isopropyl alcohol I keep this in a spray bottle and you're gonna need some paper towels and I prefer to use softer paper towels as opposed to the cheaper ones because the softer ones don't tend to scratch as much as the cheaper towels. as far as the optional items go Dawn power wash and a cheap disposable pan. So the first step in cleaning, of course, is you want to do the physical cleaning on the outside. You'll wipe it all down, open it up, and if you take some isopropyl alcohol and put it on a rag, you can wipe everything down, make sure it's all nice and clean. I suggest actually spraying on the paper instead of spraying in the unit, just in case I don't wanna damage anything inside my P2. So I wipe everything down. If you have a small vacuum, you can use that to vacuum out some corners and whatnot, but just make sure it's all clean to the touch. So now that you've wiped it all down, now we're at the hard part. You need to clean three major components of this. And that includes cleaning three mirrors, the lens and the laser head. And when I say laser head, the nozzle, the part that actually uh, holds the air and, and directs the air down to the part. We're gonna need to clean all those. And if you are feeling up to it, now I'm not sure if this voids the warranty or not. I don't think it would because people are doing it on the M1. You're gonna to have to do it here eventually is cleaning the fan. I'm gonna show you how to get to the cleaning the exhaust fan on this as well. So let's zoom in and we will start on the mirrors. First thing we need to do is go around the back and we'll start with the back mirror. So here we are on the back side and we need to remove this lid. Now you've done this before already if you haven't I'm glad you're watching so you can learn how to do this. You need to remove this lid to actually get to one, cleaning your mirrors like we're gonna do right now, or also filling up your reservoir with antifreeze and distilled water. But to remove this, you're gonna need to do a couple of things. First thing you need to do is remove the five screws on the back, and then you're gonna lift the lid and remove the six screws on the inside. Now, once you remove those six screws all the way across, now we're ready to remove this. This is a little tricky to remove because right here in the front, it wants to bind against these clips that hold it actually up against the machine. So first thing to do, lower the lid. Make sure this is closed. Remove the screws. Pull with your fingers the outside edge of these right here so it actually flips out. So the next thing you need to do is put your fingers underneath here and here and pull up. Now that actually frees the sides but this is where it's actually binding in the middle. To free this up in the middle, what you have to do is put your fingers in here and sort of twist and wiggle as you're lifting up. And what that's gonna do is make that free up and it's gonna pop out of there. So let me show you. I'm gonna twist and kind of wiggle. There we go, that's how you get it out. Now I have my camera uh, cable here, so I'm just gonna slide this up out of the way, just like this. So now let's zoom in and look at this mirror. So this right here is our first that we're gonna take out. This is actually the hardest to remove. Once you do this one, the rest of them are easy. To get this out, you're gonna slip your fingernail right here inside this groove with your thumb and you're gonna pull it out just like this. Now, as you can see here, my mirror is a full circle. That's because my machine is a pre-production machine and long story short, I have a new set of mirrors. This is what the original mirrors look like. And you can see here, there is a groove inside that mirror. When you pull out your mirrors, you're gonna have that groove. To put this back in, you'll need to align this groove with the notch that's on the holder. So make sure you pay attention when you pull this out where that groove is at so that you can get this back in place. Now to clean your mirrors, you're gonna take your lens wipe and actually just wipe down the mirror. Taking care not to scratch the mirror and make sure it's nice and clean. 
once you have your mirror clean, you can put it back in. The easiest way I found to hold this was to put your thumb in the groove and with another finger, just kind of hold it just like that, kind of holding on to the lip right there. And with that, you can take it and slide it and put it in place. Now remember, your mirror is going to have this groove in here, so pay attention to where that groove is located on your finger, so that way it's easier to put in there. And once you put it in there, the magnets will catch in place, and you'll want to wiggle it a little bit to make sure it's in the center, and you're finished with that one. Now, let's put the cover back on and move over to the front. To put the cover back on is a much easier process. You're going to catch the top part first on both sides. Once you do that, it's going to fall into place and you just push it down and that's it. Then you're going to put the screws back in place on the outside and the inside and you're finished with the cover. Next thing we need to do is access the other two mirrors. First thing we need to do is remove this and just slide it out. And you're going to pull your gantry slowly all the way forward. Doing so allows you to access this mirror right here. You're going to take this mirror off the exact same way. You're going to slip your thumb in here, pull the mirror out, and clean the mirror just like you did the other one. Once clean, you'll insert it the same way. Again, pushing down on the mirror, wiggling a little bit, make sure it's centered in there. The third and final mirror is actually underneath this cover. So the first thing you do is pull this plate off. It's just held on by magnets. Then you want to lift this whole cover up. Now this whole cover is also held on by magnets. Just kind of wiggle it and it'll come off. There's a couple of magnets holding it on there. Up here in the top is where you find your third and final mirror. To take it out, you take it out the exact same way. You put your thumb in the little groove, pull it away from the magnets, and you can pull it out. Clean this just like you would the other mirrors, and then you can gently slide this one in place. Again, wiggle it to make sure it's seated properly. Now that we've finished all three mirrors, we need to move on down to the laser lens and the laser nozzle. You can access that by taking your screwdriver again and removing these two Allen head bolts. Taking those out allows you to slide this out of the laser head. Now be careful because the actual air hose is tied to it. You can remove the air hose if you'd like. You don't have to, but if you want to remove it, you have to push down on this ring and push it down. Then you can pull the air hose out. I'll show you how to do that now. So I'm going to push down on the ring, and it's kind of hard to show you on camera, but push down on the ring and the air hose slides out. So if I can show you this, there's the little ring on top and it pushes down. And when it pushes down, it releases that hose. Now that we have this out, we need to clean it. See this right here? That's actually your laser lens. So to get this out, we need to remove a retaining ring. What I found to, to use was my fingernail. And I'm not sure if you can see this on camera, but there's a little groove on this side and on that side. And all I do is put my thumbnail in there and unscrew it just like you would a regular screw or bolt. Once you get it loose, you can kind of spin the outside ring of it until it comes free. And that's what the ring looks like. Now I'm not sure if you can see that, but you, there, there's the grooves in there that you put your thumb inside. All right, with that out, kind of pay attention to which way it comes out. The grooves for your thumb or your uh, screwdriver, if you want to use that instead, are facing up. Inside here, there is a rubber uh, gasket. Let me flip this over with my hand and to catch it all and flip this back. Let me lay this down. So I had the lens and I have that piece of rubber. Now the lens has a curved dome to it. The curved dome goes up when it's inserted because it was up against that rubber ring. So when you put it down, when you put it back in there, you're going to put the flat side in and then the rubber ring and then screw on the top part. Okay, I've set the lens off to the side and I want to focus on cleaning this nozzle. So this nozzle does get debris inside even though your air pump is running. It's going to get debris inside, especially that tip is going to get dirty as well. Take your Q-tip 
and spray some uh, isopropyl alcohol in there and you'll want to clean the nozzle on the outside and you'll want to clean it on the inside. You can also use a rag and, and push it down in there. However, the Q-tip is going to help you get all the way down to the bottom. What I do is actually take this and twist it. Swipe it around there. And I'll put this in this side and twist it as well. Do that a couple of times, replace your Q-tip, and you'll be finished up with cleaning the nozzle. Okay, so I have everything clean now. I've cleaned my nozzle and I've cleaned my lens. I'm gonna drop the lens back in there and carefully drop it, holding it from the side so that you don't get your fingerprints on the top or bottom. Drop it down. And if it doesn't sit flat all the way, just you can tap on this a little bit until it falls in there just in place. And you can take your O-ring here and put that in place. Lastly, I'm gonna take my threaded little holder here and carefully start spinning it until the threads catch and make it finger tight that way the rubber in the lens will actually stay put you don't have to make this super tight you can just make it finger tight and that's good enough as long as it's not shaking you're okay Next thing I'm gonna do is put the air hose back in this nozzle. That's easy to do, you just push it in there until it bottoms out. And then you can put this holder back in place and put your screws back in there. And lastly, of course, we're gonna put our lids back on. So just slide this in place and push it down. You can take your eyeballs, your cover, put that in place. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and put the side cover back on the P2 as well. Okay, so we have all that cleaned up so far. Now, one thing I failed to mention was the back exhaust area. Back here in the back, there's an exhaust vent here and here. They both go to the same location, but you definitely want to make sure that you keep those clean, spraying your rag down and wiping these down. So if we clean the mirrors, the lens, the interior, and the exhaust interior of the exhaust. Now let's flip on over to the back and clean the exterior. Now keep in mind, you actually do have to remove a part of this P2 that they haven't mentioned removing before. However, I'm assuming we're gonna to have to because the fan's gonna get built up with gunk and we're gonna to need to clean this. So let's flip on over here to the back and clean it. Here we are on the back side, and what I wanna do is remove these four screws to take this cover off of here. And here's where the power screwdriver really comes in handy. With all four screws removed, we can take off this cover. And when you flip this cover over, you can see what I mean by it needing to be cleaned. There's a lot of soot inside there and you'll need to wipe this down with a towel or using a Q-tip. Also, the fan itself is probably gonna need to be cleaned from time to time as well. It's easy to remove, all you do is slide it out and then you have access to clean the fan front and back. And you can also clean the port a little bit. Once you clean all of that, it's easy to slide back in place. Slide the fan in. Be careful with the wires. Make sure they're not getting pinched anywhere. Insert your screws and you'll screw it all back in place. So those are the steps I use when I clean my P2. Hopefully you found this video useful. Wait a second. I almost forgot to share with you what the Dawn Power Wash is for. And that is for cleaning your slats at the bottom of the P2. Now, the uh, alcohol does a good job of cleaning everything and you can wipe these down, you know, really quick wipe down. It'll get some of the lighter stuff off, but the oils and sap that's on here that's been here a while, it's really hard to get off with that alcohol. Vinegar also works, but it just doesn't cut um, as good as the Dawn Power Wash. 
So to clean these, what I'll do is I'll take my pan and put all of these in the pan at the same time. And I'll take my Dawn Power Wash and I'll spray it. And I'll spray it, kind of stir them up a little bit, spray it again. As soon as you spray it on there, you'll see it starting to come off. It'll start making a mess in there. Um, I'll let them soak for five or 10 minutes. And then when it's finished, I'll take it outside, take the water hose and rinse all of them off and let them dry. Um, that does a really good job of cleaning off the slats. Also, speaking of slats, I found an interesting way to store them. So I've seen some other videos, people posting of storing their slats sort of on the side of the uh, riser base, um, but you're still kind of throwing them in there. What I found was a Schedule 40 pipe, PVC pipe does a really good job at holding all the slats. So I had this piece here, I put a back on it, just a piece of uh, quarter inch plywood I cut on my P2 and glued it on there with some E6000. So yeah, this is how I store them and they're not just kind of falling everywhere. And it does fit all of them. So that's a, this is a two inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. I think you can buy these in two foot lengths if you like. And um, anyway, just want to throw that out there. So now I think that's all I had to share with you. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you have any questions you want me to answer on my next video, click the link in my Google sheet to my question and answer document. There you can have a form and you can fill out your question and I will answer that during my next video. If you don't know what my Google sheet is, where have you been? <laughs> you need to check it out. It's actually in the link of this. The link is in the description of this video and all my other P2 videos. This spreadsheet I'm sharing with everybody, it's is my working spreadsheet. It has all of my cut settings, score settings, and grave settings that I use on the material that I work with on a daily basis. And I'm sharing it with all of you. Also in there, there's some uh, different specs and stuff. You can see what, what size is this? How tall is it? Uh, how, where are the feet located? You know, I have all that in there as far as a little, little drawing I drew on there in the miscellaneous tab. And how much power does this draw? How, how loud is it? All that's in that document. Also in there, um, there's links to my other you know, Instagram account, Facebook account, all that jazz. But yeah, check it out if you haven't checked it out already. So that's it guys. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time.